Welcome back to Seeker Strength. Today's video is brought to you by the Seeker Strength stream of one to one coaching, weight of thing, power of thing, CrossFit, SNC from any sport, speed kayaking, all the way to badminton or rugby. We can help you with that. All right. Welcome back to Seeker Stand. Welcome back to Seeker Strength. A load of you asked for a Sismon Kalecki, and we are doing Simon Kalecki today. I've got a good buddy's footage. There's loads of stuff out of there of him. So we've got a little bit of mishmash. Got some from Iron Mind. If you don't know who Iron Mind is, you should go check them out. Uh, likely a lot of you, if you're watching this video, you know who Iron Mind is. Um, so obviously, go watch their stuff. A little bit of Gregor stuff from his thing. Just a small amount of that stuff. There's a longer video there. Definitely go watch all of Gregor stuff. Uh, that long video he made him is one of the best videos on the internet. It's literally kalecki all the way from the start to basically the end of his kind of or a lot of his career some of his best lifts loads of competition footage so it's a fantastic video as well and then kind of a mishmash of some other random youtube stuff but um a lot of you guys were looking for kalecki and here he is so we've got to start off so there's a couple of different things with kalecki a couple of as usual old school lifters like this there's a lot of different kind of drama with them um there's always something going on the biggest rumor about Klecki that you may not have heard was that at age 14 he tested positive and it was covered up by the polish uh political kind of officials or is the polish political powers um then he tested positive again later in his career and then i don't know if he tested positive in a different scenario did he get tested positive in a retest as far as I know, because Ilya was retroactively popped at the 2008 Olympics, I think technically Kalecki got his gold medal because he got gold, sorry, he got silver in Beijing, shaved his head for um, for solidarity with the Tibetan monks, I believe. And then he got silver at that. His career kind of finished, or it kind of petered out, similar to um, Lao Hui. Liao Hui, again, here we are again. Similar to that kind of career, we never really saw him kind of reach his full potential. The big thing with Kalecki was he said that his coaches pushed him very, very hard and he hit his peak basically at 18 or 19 years old. And he had a lot of back injuries from what I know and he didn't want to train as hard or didn't want to push himself as hard because the coaches were essentially trying to murder him and get the most results out of him. We know that's not the best way to treat athletes. We know that's not how you can treat people. So... I think Kalecki had the talent, certainly the mentality, the drive and the political willpower behind him. But unfortunately, a coaching situation, I think, somewhat fucked him up a little bit in terms of what his career could have been. And now he's doing MMA. There's a little bit of MMA stuff at the end, which I really want to get in as well. But let's start with his biggest lift, 232.5 kilos as an 18-year-old, 94-kilo weightlifter. He broke this as... A junior, of course, at 18. This was the record that Ilya had to beat as a senior for 233. Of course, the uh, 232 and a half, the half kilo rule was still implemented here in the 2000, I think. So this 232 and a half. Very aggressive dynamic start. The classic Kalecki double bounce from the bottom. And then this really deep jerk position. Superb lockout overhead. So Kalecki was often kind of touted as being the weaker of a lifter or not as strong. And not as kind of musculature, but he's in incredible shape. He's a taller lifter. He's quite stretched out over that 94 kilo category. I'd bet that 102 would be a great option for him at the moment if he was lifting now. So that 232 and a half kilos is obviously an incredible lift for an 18 year old to be lifting in any way category, let alone the 94. So a phenomenal lift. He has a kind of classic kind of. It was a very deep split jerk, but you'll see later on that uh, a lot of his split jerks, the lighter weights, weren't as deep. He caught them quite high, which is kind of something you should be going for, I think. It's not good for people to be aiming to get a deep split jerk. If it happens, perfect, but focus on that fast dip and driving fast into the split jerk. Don't force yourself down. Don't try and get underneath. It doesn't work very well, because what often happens is people just cut that drive very, very short and cut the bar height. As a good split jerk is a combination of both bar height and elevation and fast underneath. It's a timing issue. It's why jerks are so hard. It's why it's the most missed lift in competition or any weightlifting training, essentially, specifically competitions and specifically the third attempt on clean and jerks. So don't try and squat jerk that kind of split jerk, split jerk, but make sure you are 
with both it's very rare i see an issue where people were trying to drive it too high often the issue is just that back leg will be a little bit too straight but um a great split jerk turn nonetheless especially for his limb length and proportions so of course this is the famous battle from iron mind of the europeans with uh kalecki or not kalecki for kakish kakish Vili. of course this is kalecki so Kalecki's big downfall was his snatch technique and his ability to snatch heavier weights. I don't know if anyone knows what his best snatch and training was. I'd imagine it was somewhere around maybe 185 or so. We often saw him doing kind of 175, close to 180s, but never really getting beyond those. And it was probably his downfall for being, you know, if you compare him to, for example, Ili Ili or um, Kakishvili. Both of those superb snatchers, 185, both of them. Kakashvili did 188 in competition. He had the long-standing 94 kilo world record. But Kalecki's technique, honestly, so if you were looking at this as a different lifter, you know, I think the hips are too low from the start position. I think it just kind of murdered him. The pull was very laboured. Probably, realistically, I think the sash just wasn't something he got as well as the clean and jerk, and that is, you know, probably an intrinsic property. Would we have seen this change over the course of his career if he had a different coach? I bet we probably would, and we've seen it a lot better a snatch. But then, of course, the clean jerk was really his speciality. So great pull on there, phenomenal mobility, full grip in the bottom, great jerk. Split jerk position is superb. So split jerk positions will always kind of look different for lifters. Um, but we'll always have those principles of that knee kind of behind the laces, a reasonable and kind of moderate bend in the back knee, but not excessive. Back heel is off the ground. Head and torso and barbell are well stacked. So you can see the big thing that we used to always hear about Kalecki was that his he was a weak lifter and he'd say that himself his squat wasn't great. So his best clean jerk was 235 in, in competition in a local Polish competition. I don't know if he's done more in training, but he said his best squat was something like 260 by 4 or it was 264 by 4. That still probably put him in the region of 280 or 290. Now, I have an argument against that. I'd imagine he could squat a lot more than that. He's a phenomenally talented lifter in one of the uh, you know premier strength sports, one of the best athletes to get on the grace of platform. The Polish are notorious, and I've seen this firsthand. Uh, they don't really, and at the time, his coach did not like back squats, was very against back squats. So I'd say the reality here was that they just didn't push his back squat and didn't get an opportunity to peak his back squat into bigger numbers and push these into kind of realms where it might have been a bit more useful. Would he have seen less injuries and less double bouncing and a bit more kind of grit for his training if he'd been north of 300 who knows it, it's it's hard to say was that kind of ingrained and was that how he's always going to lift those weights we'll never really know but it would have been interesting to see if he had more of an opportunity to push the back squat i believe his coach was kind of one of abijev's uh, prodigies or someone who worked closely with him of course the results in the barbell in the competition are all that matters and that's what he really hit so then these some local competitions, 235, that double bounce. Insane, insane ability to, you know, that resilience of his tendons, their ability to attenuate the force to get up out of that. Incredibly talented athlete, physically a absolute specimen. Had that classic kind of star position. Um, so 220 here. Yeah, the split jerk for me was Galecki's just, it's so aesthetic to look at. It's beautiful. The lockout, the anatomy of his elbows, everything looks great. Snatch at lighter weights looks great as well, but I think the weights were the, the kind of killer for him. Um, the really aggressive off the floor, always kind of leaning back and swinging the weight a little bit if we're looking kind of technical analysis. So here's him from that Gregor's video on all things gym. So when he's much younger, you can see the technique is the exact same, it's, which is great to see. But then this kind of great split jerk position. He looks simply the same. And this is the heaviest one then, 235. Again, from Gregor's video, we got all the footage. Uh, so again, very, very deep position, but super fast. Incredible overhead strength. I'd love to know if he did much push press. Now, this video is from Kalecki's father. Videoed like a six-part series of the training of the National Polish team at the time. He went for kind of artsy shots. And while it looked cool in some scenarios, other times it was a little bit hard to watch. I think... I think it was Kalecki's father. I'm almost certain of that. Again, the classic ironworks. Uh, a lot of no foot snatch and training. A lot of repetitions. The Polish training is very, very interesting. It's quite Soviet. Uh, a lot of volume. It's very nuanced. And it has a lot of thought behind it. It's kind of classic programming periodization style work. There's a great book, The Training of a Weightlifter. I did a review on it before. Definitely go check that out. It's a great book to look at weightlifting. 
But I remember watching these Polish training videos, six parts. I actually can't find them. I can only find the compilation of Kalecki's from that, which is very convenient. But great video. Watched them hundreds of times in training because it was one of the few weightlifting videos on the internet of weightlifters training. Of course, they have the classic Aleko plates, which are some of the best plates in the world to ever be made. And you can see the, the angles of this were quite artsy. But it was a great training video. VHS, full on camcorder just the classic now the most important thing we need to learn from this video is the aesthetic and the dress code was what dress codes should be in gyms not really specific to training adidas gear baggy pants some kind of track suits adidas tops everyone looks incredibly athletic because they're also wearing adidas shoes and as we know if you wear adidas shoes black pants and white socks you will automatically be 10 points more aesthetic looking but also potentially 1500 more points athletic it, it's it's very hard to pin down because the numbers are so high it's actually hard to even collaborate those numbers so some of course this wasn't vintage adidas this was just adidas at the time but now the vintage adidas on the shoulders is all the rage a lot of repetitions Klecky was notorious for this in his training but it looks at things of dropping the barbell early not a fan of it um of dropping it the, that fashion i prefer to see at least a little stand up now, of course, I'm not critiquing Kalecki's use of this. I'm just saying in training for athletes, I hate to see it. Um, it's fine with straps and doubles and stuff, but I prefer to see at least some attempt to stand up. I don't like to see the drop in the bottom. So you'll see he had that really aggressive start position. And of course, he's so talented, so much faster fibers. Of course, the use of form sensing drugs massively helps here. But that aggressive start position, typically you'll see in analysis of snatches that the start is slower, uh, whether deliberately or through an intrinsic property of knowing that the second pull needs to be faster in the snatch. I'd love to have seen someone who was a bit more technical minded uh, adjust it. Of course, at that level, it's very, very difficult to change, but it would always been very interesting to see. Uh, it's clean, of course, when he got the bounce, it's beautiful. Uh, and then this jerk dip and drive, phenomenal. He had a very short jerk dip and drive, uh, even for a taller lifter interesting actually i've never seen a video i don't remember his back skill video so see how low down that barbell is in his back you know we were talking about that in the luke richardson video that kind of hybrid bar position so high bar shouldn't be too high it should be a little bit lower down kind of the widest point to your shoulder kind of almost level with your chromium process um and it works very well for everyone from short to tall lifters but specifically tall lifters benefit a lot from it you know linear lifters like him uh, so we've got 200 okay this does look hard uh, and as you can see in back squatting so this is Zygmunt's but I don't Zygmunt's wasn't his original coach from what I'm aware feel free some correct me if I'm talking absolute nonsense but from what I remember it wasn't interesting to see the bar height change actually on this set and then we've got Georgie Azanitsi Lash's current coach a uh, very good lifter himself so I think 181 snatch and maybe 208 210 clean and jerk beat PR Stimas at Athens. So this is another Iron Mind training video. I'm not actually sure which one it is because this is not even an upload from Iron Mind. This is one of their DVDs, or more specifically VHS tapes, where Kalecki's training with Georgie. Instantly, the barbell had gotten a little bit lower in the later videos. So this is obviously a younger, a younger Kalecki in somewhere in time in the late 90s, I believe. And the the fashion here is even more vintage. We're super bougie. Uh, as an it's he could fit into any training hall at the moment with the leggings very forward thinking of him very uh very on point with his leggings and of course in training and some kind of adidas shoes so i'm not sure what training hall this is i assume it's some kind of world's training hall interesting to see them training together and sharing a bar because you'd never see that at the moment and probably not even that much before so maybe it's some kind of training collaboration a lot of those things do actually happen in the weightlifting world uh, you just don't see them a lot I think they happen less, more so, but even years gone by, a lot of national team athletes would go to other places and do their best to learn from other athletes and see what the story is. Specifically, it was an experience for the athletes, but a lot of times the coaches would go to learn from other coaches and see what they were doing. Uh, I wonder how many performance enhancing drug secrets were also shared. Interesting to see the difference in their styles. Kleck, he's a very powerful squad, very strong. Coming back on these heels a lot, interestingly, but he's very fast, knees forward, very fast kind of classic that's kind of how a talented weightlifter squats naturally if they're not given a huge amount of guidance because they don't particularly need it that's how they'll end up squatting is a lot of knee extensor knees forward high bar not massively tight in the upper back because it doesn't specifically need to be although i bet it's quite tight and then just fast powerful 
and dynamic squats, which is what you want for your waist and squats. So I think uh, Randall says in the video, this is something like 220. So they don't look unbelievable. Squat looks a lot like Max Lang squat here, like a lot of external rotation in the bottom, a lot of forced external rotation. Now, again, this is still 220 for a triple. So it'd have been very interesting to see what he would have hit in the back squat if he was given the chance. Obviously, he did need it. Again, world records on the stage are what mattered to countries then and what matters to countries now. But it'd be interesting to see what would have benefited him for his long-term development, you know, that higher force potential and just those heavier weights in the back squat. Rumour has it his best front squat was his best clean and jerk, but I would, I'd be doubtful. I'm sceptical of that, but I'd, I'd always, I'd be interested to see. I don't think see any videos of him actually front squatting, so I'd like to, uh, I'd love to see some of those, but I don't think we have any. I'm not too sure. I don't think we've ever seen him talk about his programming or we've seen any any videos of him or any kind of records of his programming. Um, I'm sure he's contactable, so it'll be interesting to see. Speaking of Liao Hui, Liao Hui, I'm sure I'm saying it wrong again. I don't want my brain won't remember, but someone sent me, I suppose, his program from a blog, and we'll definitely do a video on that myself and Dara, so that will be coming as well, which is very interesting. It's great to see it's just normal programming, essentially, uh, but we'll, we'll have a look and it'll make for a good video, I think. So I think this, this might be a bit more, maybe that was 220. That looked quite good, though. Depending on what stage he was in his training, um, and how much how much juicy poodles he was on, what would he have actually squatted? So Kalecki or as an Itzy keeping up with him. I'd love to know what Kalecki's best deadlift was. Or what his best potential for deadlift was in terms of the uh his training or if he ever went that heavy. I know the from what I've seen as the Polish training, they did like pulls and we've seen Kalecki doing a lot of pulls but never really heavy. So it'd be interesting to see what his kind of max capability in the deadlift was. I could see it being either two ways. I could see it being like abysmal and he could barely pull 260. Or I could see something like where he's just had a ridiculous pull and could like absolutely pull 300 as hard as he could off the ground, you know, or something like that. So it'd be interesting to see. Gotta admit, George Nizniz, he's winning these squats. I feel like he is, uh, he's moving them harder. He's got the buzz. Okay, maybe this is a 20. I maybe still moving quite well. You can see... Kalecki's having to put a lot more effort into the upper body position, I think, probably because he has to work a bit harder at these squats, because likely less talented than Azanitsi for squats, less well built for them in terms of just purely back squat movement. So you can see he's putting a lot more effort into this. The upper back position looks more rigid and looks more defined. It actually seems to be getting a little bit lower as well as the sets go on, which is interesting, whereas you can see Azanitsi's is very, very high. And, uh, you know, I bet Azanitsi had a quite a big squat in his training. Supposedly. Kakishvili had something in the region of like 320 as a 94 and there's a photo of Kakishvili squatting and it's a beautiful, it's such a nice squat and I wish there was a video of, of that squat happening but unfortunately I don't think there is um, so I'd love to have seen what Kakishvili squats look like. Uh, one thing with Kalecki as well was that he seemed very very flexible and we've seen some clips of him training and incredibly important so there's funnily enough i was looking at a paper recently that was published this year last year and i was looking at the polish men's national team compared to polish club members and they were looking at the difference just purely in terms of mobility and range of motion and the two distinct things they found was that the polish national team the elite team ankle and spinal flexibility was greater than the club members shoulder girdle flexibility is what they called it didn't change that much but that their ankle and upper back or their up their back flexibility was greater than the club members teams and they think this is definitely a distinct importance and it's something we've talked about a lot for example in that static stretching video that the mobility is incredibly important in terms of you know fluidity of movement reaching positions reaching optimal positions uh, the defense against injury mm, it's it's a it's not it's not a cut and dry process and it's a bit more nuanced than that but certainly for performance being more mobile more mobile and being very strong and fast of course is very very useful but a uh, very classic kind of dynamic warm-up we'd see from the classic era of weightlifting and kind of in general you'd see a lot of national teams would warm up like this a lot of times you'd see these teams do this together if they're in a team environment everyone will do the dynamic warm-up together even if they're not doing the exact same program you'll still see this dynamic stuff and especially if you're training nine ten times a week uh, or more potentially depending on what stage Kalecki was in you know, you want to feel good, you want to warm up into it psychologically, but also for the physiological advantages, uh, someone's ass. So uber oversized top, and he's just mobilizing all the joints, 
Okay, so here I wanted to get this in. I'm going to sneak this in. I know a lot of you aren't weightlifters, but some of you are a little bit of grappling. And Klecky moved to MMA and he is uh, turned into a fucking unit. And I know he went, he did some powerlifting competition or just bench only, where he benched something like 227. And that's why I was wondering if he's able to bench 227, what would he have squatted if he'd kind of focused his training around it? It must have been somewhere in north. It must have been close to 320 to 94. But you can see the amount of muscle mass he's on here. He's in his late 30s, maybe early 40s, I would assume. You know, and he's turned into a unit. So you can see a lot of this neck training. He's um, obviously a neck for mixed martial arts, not getting knocked out and resisting injury. But you can just see his quality of movement, the proprioception, where his body is, what he's able to do with his body. Is incredibly impressive you know he is an athlete true and true like just one of those people when you're like that person's athletic and a click he is one of those people so you see him kind of flipping over here so you can see just superbly athletic knows exactly where his body is know where his limbs are can move through them you know he's picked up a new sport a very athletically demanding sport practicing his double legs or single legs um so just superbly aware of his body is moving fast of course heavily juiced and you know you'll see that a lot of combat sports they just love gear and uh with good reason because they want the training and the attributes they need so you can see him doing a little shadow boxing i think he does a little bit of grappling with a partner here in the minute uh this is one of those showcases i think where they are okay yeah so they're doing like this like a media training so you can see him going for the back stuff this dude definitely looks like a wrestler. He's got his ASIC wrestling shoes on. So just going for a lot of the back stuff, some arm drags, um, some kind of, yeah. So very, very interesting. Very interesting to see many people come from wrestling to jiu-jitsu. They're so much faster in the scramble. They're so much faster at getting to someone's back. You know, wrestling prior to jiu-jitsu, you'll see them, especially younger athletes, they have such tenacity and they really go for it. Um, so obviously sweep, submit, or take someone's back in jiu-jitsu or some of your prime goals. MMA, of course, then you can start punching someone in the back of the head or the sides of the head. But uh, it's interesting to see just how talented Klecky was. And I couldn't let this video go without just looking at how good he is in general. If anyone knows what kind of fight record he's got going on in the MMA, I don't know if it's just some polar circuits. He seems quite popular in regards to it. He seems to be doing a lot of fights. So if anyone knows how he's getting on, it'd be very interesting to see in the comments. Okay, lads, I hope you enjoyed the video. Any other classic lifters? So someone said Andrea Ramno, and I completely kind of forgot about him, and he's is from that kind of classical era, so might do him next time. But I hope you enjoyed the Klecky video, because I certainly did. Thanks for watching.